Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I have teamed up with Valvoline and had discussions with their engineers about carbon buildup in modern engines and what role engine oil plays in those carbon deposits forming. So we're going to be focusing on three questions. Why do modern engines have carbon buildup? How can engine oil help prevent carbon deposits? And how do you know if the oil you're buying helps prevent carbon buildup? So let's get right into it. Why do modern engines have carbon problems? Well, unlike many older engines, modern engines are trending towards turbocharged, downsized, direct injection engines for efficiency benefits. But these changes have created unique challenges for newer engines, which have higher internal pressures and temperatures and a lack of port injectors. Looking at the intake valve on a gasoline engine with direct injection, we need to think about all of the different ways that contaminants can contact these intake valves. First off, blow-by from combustion can reach the intake valves through the positive crankcase ventilation system, which prevents the crankcase pressure from getting too high. The PCV system also means that as the lighter part of the engine oil evaporates, it can pass by the intake valves. You can also have exhaust gases routed back to the intake valves through an exhaust gas recirculation system, typically used for emission purposes which carry combustion contaminants. Remaining exhaust gases can also contact the intake valve from inside the combustion chamber when the intake valve opens. Finally, engine oil can leak down the valve guides and contact the intake valves, especially as oil viscosities continue to become thinner for efficiency purposes. Now, in port-injected engines, and even more so with the right additives, the fuel can wash the intake valves as the engine is used, so the likelihood of carbon deposits forming on the intake valves is significantly reduced. And while port-injected and dual-injection engines are still common today, there are 38 million vehicles in the United States alone using direct injection. So what if direct injection is all you have? Well, this leads us to our next question, how can engine oil help prevent carbon deposits? Well, in direct injection engines, the oil itself is really all you've got to actively protect your intake valves. The oil itself is composed of about 80% base oil and 20% additives, both of which play a role in fighting carbon deposits. From a base oil standpoint, you don't want molecules that break down or evaporate with heat, but at the same time, they should have good flow characteristics at low temperatures. This means you don't want overly large or overly small molecules, molecules that aren't fully saturated with hydrogen, or overly long straight chain molecules. The wrong molecular structure can break down with heat and form deposit precursors. These precursors will attach to intake valves, pistons, and cylinder walls, and form deposits. This is where the additives come in, particularly detergents and dispersants. Detergents have a hydrocarbon tail and a polar head, usually a metal. So what does this mean? Well, it means one end, the polar head, likes to bond to metallic surfaces, while the other end deflects deposits and prevents them from bonding to the metal surface. If precursors can't contact the metal surfaces, they can't form deposits. Now, dispersants also have a hydrocarbon tail and a polar head, however, the tail is a bit longer than detergents and the polar head isn't quite as strong. The hydrocarbon tail likes oil, while the polar head likes water, metals, and contaminants basically the things you don't want. So as a deposit precursor is floating around in the oil, the dispersants will attach to it, keeping the contaminant suspended so it doesn't attach to metal surfaces. From there, it can either be filtered out as it passes through the oil filter or kept suspended until you change the oil. This is actually why you'll see oil turn black, even soon after an oil change. This means the oil is doing its job and holding the contaminants suspended rather than allowing them to gunk up your engine. Now, Valvoline's modern engine oil was designed for turbocharged gasoline direct injection engines, which leads us to our final question. How do you know if the oil you're buying helps to prevent carbon deposits? Well, it all comes down to testing. On the back of the bottle, you'll see the certifications the oil has passed, such as APISN, ILSAC GF5, as well as manufacturer tests and specifications like GM's Dexos 1 Gen 2. Each of these certifications have respective tests that must be passed in order for the manufacturers to feel comfortable allowing an engine oil to be used in their car. The American Petroleum Institute, API, has also recently published a new classification, SN+, which adds testing to ensure engines are protected against low-speed pre-ignition, a requirement that Valvoline has made sure all of their passenger car engine oils pass. Valvoline's goal with Modern Engine was to also design for protection against carbon buildup in addition to LSPI. Their claim is that on average, they've exceeded piston and intake valve deposit tests set by the industry with a 30% margin.
In addition to the engine oil you choose, it's also obviously important to change your oil regularly and top off oil as needed. Remember that if oil is burned off, you'll have less oil in your engine, so the remaining oil now has to work even harder to keep your engine clean and efficient. So a huge thank you to Valvoline for their support and insight shared, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.